Well, we, we have a few choice names for him, but I won't say it on the air. Unbelievable. Well, I have a song for your relatives. Play it now, guys. Thanks for the call. Play the song for them. You got it ready? The Joe and Paul song? Because I want to translate for my listeners who don't have it. Just the button. You just hit the button, Joe. And <laughs> now, the reason I play that song is to make myself laugh. Nobody understands why I play that song. It was, I, well, let me start from the top. When I was a little boy in New York, you know, they used to, well, they still are, there were ethnic stations in New York. WBAI, I think, is all Spanish and this and that. So when I was a kid, there was a very large Yiddish-speaking population in New York, and they used to play Yiddish shows. Yiddish is a mixture of German, Hebrew, and uh, invented words, and it was meant as a basically a language so that the over the overseers in the medieval times didn't know what the Jewish people who were violently oppressed were, were saying, really. And it became a whole language unto itself with its own literature. Fabulous literature. Isaac Bashev, a singer, wrote in Yiddish, and so did others. It's a beautiful language. I myself don't speak the language. However, I know a few words of it. And the song makes me laugh because it's very funny. They used to play this song on a radio station, and it meant... Well, play it again for a minute. I'll translate it right after it. Listen. The music unto itself. Joe and Paul, let's go to Fargini, Bravarilla Joe and Paul, that let your bully creak, Bravarilla suit, I go, I keep in Zola perfect, I fed in Daftier, Kuifen, Norba Joe and Paul. It's basic. It's basically, you know what it is? They were playing on a religious themed background. That's on how smart the, the ad maker. He made an ad that sounded like it was part of a synagogue chant. And he was saying, come and shop in the Joe and Paul store and buy your, your son a suit, a coat, and a gabardine. Basically, that's what he's saying. You should shop here because it's good clothing, et cetera. It's very funny. But uh, it's it's a piece of American radio history that only I could laugh at. I don't think anyone in the audience laughs when I play this. In fact, it probably killed the audience. I can't imagine anyone listening in Albuquerque, New Mexico, would listen to the show for another second after hearing the uh, Joe and Paul song. I can't imagine that a conservative Christian listening in Houston, Texas would ever want to listen to me again. But you got to understand something. The first rule of talk radio is one that most people forget. You know what it is? If the host is not having a good time, his show is over. That is why I survive and others have fallen by the wayside like flies that were swatted down by the audience because they were no longer enjoying it and you knew it. I'm a strange guy. I can enjoy it no matter what they throw at me, no matter who people sta- who stabs me in the back. I'm bigger than all of them put together. The Lilliputians will never get me down. Never. Only God. Only God. Only God. So I laugh at this. It makes me happy. I make you happy. I have no girls crossing legs. I have no flashing lights, no studios, no hammers, no nail guns like Hannity. I have no shillelaghs like O'Reilly. I have no... You're on with the hand, with the nose growing every day bigger than Pinocchio. It's all my voice, my words, my ideas, and my emotions that you listen to. And it all comes out of the speaker. So if I'm happy, you're happy. If I'm sad, you're sad. If I'm bored, you're bored. And when you start to get bored every day, the audience hears it. And you know what happens? They stop listening to you. 